Dear students, in this video, we will prove few theorems. First theorem is the necessary and sufficient condition for the convergence of a monotonic sequence is that it is bounded. That means if a sequence is monotonic and convergent, then definitely that sequence will be bounded. And if sequence is bounded, then definitely that sequence is converges as well as monotonic. So we will prove this. So necessary part. Suppose A and B a convergent sequence which converges to L. Then obviously for a given epsilon there exists a positive integer m such that magnitude of A n minus L is less than epsilon for all n greater than or equals to m. Open this inequality so we get this L minus epsilon to A n is less than L plus epsilon for all n greater than or equals to m and that's why A n is bounded. So one part is over. Now the second part. The condition is sufficient. So let A n be a monotonic sequence which is bounded. Then since this is monotonic sequence which is bounded so obviously this is either monotonically increasing or decreasing by the definition. So then A n is either monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing. On the other side sequence is also bounded. Bounded means bounded below as well as bounded above. So also it is bounded that's why above and bounded below. So now sequence is either monotonically increasing or decreasing or bounded above and bounded below. So we will take all these possibilities. So since if a first case if a n is bounded monotonically increasing sequence then so this is bounded so obviously this will be bounded above also. So then a n is bounded above. So this is bounded monotonically increasing that means bounded above and monotonic and that's why it converges to its least upper bound. We have already proved this theorem in the previous. So this is the conclusion from the previous theorem. Second case if this is bounded and monotonically decreasing then obviously bounded means this is bounded below also. So this is bounded below and monotonically decreasing that's why this will converge to its greatest lower bound and that's why again a convergent sequence. Then from these two parts we can conclude that sequence n is a convergent sequence. So this is the theorem. Fine. Now we will start the next theorem. The statement says that first part, this is divided into two parts. First part says every monotonically increasing sequence which is not bounded above, monotonically increasing but not bounded above, then this sequence diverges to infinite. Second statement says that every monotonically decreasing sequence that means sequence is monotonically decreasing having decreasing pattern but not bounded below so obviously diverges to infinite. So this is the meaning here we have a monotonically increasing sequence which is not bounded so obviously tends to positive infinite so this is the first theorem. Second says that we are having a monotonically decreasing sequence which is not bounded below so obviously this is this sequence tends to minus infinite so we have to prove this. So now the first part. So let A and B a monotonically increasing sequence which is not bounded above then by the definition of monotonically increasing sequence since you can see sorry so here since the monotonically increasing sequence which is not bounded above so since we are having this pattern sequence is monotonically increasing so if we fix any k here however large then obviously some terms are greater than this. So we can find number m for which you can say that a m or you suppose this number is this corresponding number is this m. So we can say that a m is greater than this number k because this value is greater than this number. So this is written here. So for so for any k however large there exists a positive integer m such that a m is greater than k fine. Now since sequence is obviously since the sequence is monotonically increasing which that means for all n greater than equals to m we can say that a n is greater than equals to a m this is by the definition of monotonically increasing sequence so here a n is greater than equals to a m is greater than k because in previous we have already shown that this 
because am is here am is greater than k so if this is happening this is happening an is greater than equals to am but am is greater than k so this is valid for all n greater than equals to m that means an is greater than k for all n greater than equals to m and this is nothing but the condition of divergence that's why we can say that limit n tending to infinite n tends to infinite that's why diverges to infinite this is the first part similarly the second part here suppose an is monotonically decreasing sequence which is not bounded below then if you take any we are having a sequence which is diverging towards minus infinite then you can pick any number small k however small this is negative number less than zero however small then immediately you can find some numbers here m such that the corresponding value is less than this number so this is am so this is so there exists a positive integer m such that am is less than minus k which is here am is less than minus k am is less than minus k fine here we have taken minus k because we have assumed k is positive number so either we can write here negative number then there is no need to write down minus sign if here i am writing positive number so that's why we have to take minus k this is the only difference fine so all the things are equal so since am since this sequence is monotonically decreasing so obviously for all n greater than equals to m an will be less than equals to m this is by the monotonically decreasing sequence but am is less than minus k so we are having this so am is this that's why after taking limit we can say that am diverges to minus infinite so this is the theorem fine now the next theorem next theorem is this every monotonic sequence either converges or diverges very simple every monotonic sequence may be increasing or decreasing either converges or diverges this is the theorem so let an be a monotonic sequence then this an is either monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing now here we have two things so that you can understood this sequence is monotonic then we have two possibilities either increasing or decreasing now if sequence is monotonically increasing then there are two possibilities whether this sequence is bounded above case first second case sequence is monotonic but there is no upper bound similarly here sequence is decreasing but bounded below so there is a k small k here here is the positive k second case sequence is monotonically decreasing but there is no bound no bound similarly here no bound so there are possibilities so if sequence is monotonically increasing and bounded above then obviously this sequence will converge to its least upper bound least upper bound converges to this is written here so an is monotonically increasing then there are two possibilities either this is bounded above then obviously sequence will converge to its least upper bound if it is not bounded then diverge to infinite here in this case this there is no bound so obviously plus infinite to so diverges which is written here in the second case here if an is monotonically decreasing sequence then again this monotonically decreasing and bounded below that means this pattern then obviously this will greatest lower bound glp converges to greatest lower bound if the sequence is not bounded below that means this pattern then this will tend to minus infinite that means diverges so this is written here so from these two parts one and two we can say that either monotonically sequence converges or diverges there are only two possibility there is no possibility of oscillation that's why this is a note so this is the theorem theorem is over here and now based on this theorem we have a note a monotonic sequence is never oscillatory because 
monotonic sequence either converges or diverges only uh, and the concise the conclusion of all these theorems is written here a sequence is monotonic which is either increasing or decreasing if increasing then either bounded above or unbounded if unbounded above then converges to least upper bound if unbounded then diverges to plus infinite similarly here if de decreasing sequence which is bounded below then obviously converges to greatest lower bound if unbounded above unbounded then this diverges to minus infinite so from these and these they are both converges that's why converges they are diverging situations so diverge so that's why a monotonic sequence either converges or diverges so this is the conclusion from the theorem fine now we are having this theorem which is very important theorem nested interval property or cantor intersection theorem we are having nested intervals we have already studied this type of things in uh, during the when we are discussing the sets set theory we have already discussed real set of real numbers we have already discussed this thing so now nested interval property or cantor intersection theorem what is the statement statement says that let i n and we are written this in a sequence form so i n be a sequence actually here this is i n but what is i n i n is nothing but closed interval a n b n this so this is written here so this is a sequence be a sequence of closed intervals all the intervals are closed satisfying these two properties number one i n plus one is subset of i n that means the next interval will be less the, will be the subset of the previous interval fine that means we are having this kind of pattern first interval is a1 b1 which is nothing but i1 then the next interval is a2 b2 which is i2 so you can see that i2 is subset of i1 similarly somewhere we have a n b n and then here we have a n plus 1 and b n plus 1 so this is the so this is i n plus 1 this one is i n from here to here fine so you understood i think this is the meaning so first statement is this second says that the length of nth interval which is denoted by L, L represent the length of nth interval is nothing but what is the length of this interval nth bn minus an. So this is written here bn minus an tends to infinite, tends to zero sorry. When n tending to infinite this length tends to zero because interval is shrinking small and small and finally they will zero. So this is written here. So as n tends to then there exists a unique number x such that x belongs to i n for all n this number belongs to the every closed interval i n that means this intersection of this is a singleton set so here we can say that this x belongs to here and you can see that this x is common to all the n that's why x belongs to i n for all n belongs to n and since this x belongs to i n so that's why if you take the intersection of all these num in intervals here i n from 1 to infinite then obviously we are getting a singleton x so this is the theorem we have to prove this fine let us start the proof here is the proof so here we have written constructed this interval we have already shown you that a1 b1 a2 b2 and this is from here to here is nth interval this is the n plus 1th interval from here to here fine and this is the common point x so since i n plus 1 is subset of i n then obviously what is i n plus 1 this interval what is i n i n is this interval this is subset of this interval when you open this then what you will get you will get you will see that here is a n a n is less than a n plus 1 which is less than b n plus 1 which is less than b n so we are getting this inequality so this this subset this subset relation is nothing but this inequality which is valid for all n belongs to n fine so now you can divide this inequality into two parts one is for a another one is for b here you can see that this inequality is nothing but monotonically increasing in nature 
however this this part is showing that b is in monotonically decreasing nature so that's why sequence an which is obviously a sequence of real numbers this is the sequence of real numbers this is a monotonically increasing in nature and the sequence of b's this is monotonically decreasing in nature they are decreasing in pack nature so that's why bn is monotonically decreasing fine so now i1 is the largest interval that and all the intervals they will lie inside it so that's why i n is subset of i n for all n belongs to n we can easily see this this is i 1 and i n is less than this so uh, this is subset of this so that's why they are the subset of this when you open this you can see that a 1 is less than a n a n is less than b n and b n is less than b 1 so this is written here so uh, this implies that because a n is monotonically increasing so since a n is monotonically increasing this pattern so and if this sequence is bounded above then obviously this will be a convergent sequence so now see from here from here from here so a n is monotonically increasing and bounded above by b1 that's why this will converge to its its upper bound that means least upper bound so that's why this is written here a n is bounded above because here we are having a n is less than or equal to b1 a n is less than or equal to b1 so bounded above similarly a1 is less than or equal to b1 a1 is less than or equal to b1 from here that's why b n is bounded below so since a n is monotonically increasing and bounded above by a1 that's why b1 sorry b1 so converges to its least upper bound this is the sequence a n on the other side sequence b is decreasing in pattern and bounded below this bounded below by a1 so this is a1 here that's why this will converge to its greatest lower bound so this is written here an converges to its least upper bound and here we will assume that say this is a so here we will assume that this least upper bound is say a and greatest lower bound is suppose b so here a n converges to least upper bound say a b n converges to its greatest lower bound say b fine so now we will show that this a and b both are same numbers so now the next target is to show that we have to prove that a is equals to b fine how to prove this let us take b n is equals to b can b n can be written as add and subtract a n so b n minus a n plus a n and this is valid this is valid for all n now take the limit take the limit so limit of bn is equal to limit of this part plus limit of this part but since by the assumption the length of the nth interval this is nothing but the length of the nth interval so this will tend to zero as n tend to infinite so this will tend to zero and we have already taken that the sequence bn converges to greatest lower bound b so that's why the value of this limit is nothing but b so here is b the value of this limit is zero the value of this limit is a because a n converges to a so this limit is nothing but a so b is equals to a suppose x suppose x say so x is the nothing but the least upper bound for sequence a and greatest lower bound for b tick so a n is less than equals to x for all n and at the same time x is less than equal to b n for all n because b n is in decreasing nature a n is in increasing nature that's why so when you combine these two so a n is less than equals to x is less than equal to b n for all n because this is valid for all n so that's why x belongs to closed interval a n b n for all n what is this this is nothing but capital i n interval capital i n and since this x belongs to in each n that's why x will belong to their intersection also so this is written here fine so this implies there exist a number common to all the interval and this number is nothing but x one part is over now we have to show the uniqueness of x now we will show that this x is actually a unique number there is no other x such type of number so we will prove this here now we will show or prove the uniqueness that this number x is unique suppose there are two numbers x and y they are distinct so if possible suppose x and y are two distinct numbers common to all the intervals that means x belongs to this in a and b n for all n as well as y belongs to a and b n for all n and since both are distinct number so obviously x is not equals to y 
so either x is less than y or x is greater than y suppose x is less than y suppose x is less than y then according to this an is less than because x belongs to a and b n so since x belongs to a and b n that means this this is a and b n and x belongs to this number somewhere here so obviously a n is less than equals to x so this is written here but we have assumed that x is less than y at the same time y is also here so x is less than y and both are in, in this interval so obviously they will satisfy this inequality fine they will satisfy this inequality now since they are satisfying this inequality so you can see that the distance this is obviously larger than this distance so this distance is denoted by y minus x and the distance this can be written as bn minus a n so here bn minus a n this distance is greater than this in distance or equal to so this distance is greater than or equal to this number this is valid for all n we have and suppose this is epsilon this is epsilon so we are having bn minus an is greater than or equal to epsilon for all n this is equation number 1 but since by the assumption length of the nth interval is 0 so this is by the assumption so limit n tend to infinite bn minus an is 0 because the length is tending to 0 then by the definition of the limit for epsilon which is nothing but we have assumed that y minus x for this choice of epsilon there exists a positive integer m such that the magnitude of this sequence because this is also a sequence so bn minus an minus limit is 0 so 0 is less than epsilon for all n greater than equals to b this is by the definition of the 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 convergent sequence so here sequence is this bn minus an so limit is 0 epsilon we have already assumed this so this is this when you open this we will get bn minus an is less than epsilon for all n greater than equals to m because we have assumed that the interval is positive this may be negative also but we have assumed that this is a positive interval so bn minus an is less than epsilon for all n greater than equals to m fine so which contradicts one because one says that bn minus an is greater than equals to epsilon however here bn minus an is less than epsilon so they are contradicting to each other so this is this can be taken as second so that's why they are contradicting to each other that's why our assumption is wrong that there are two distinct numbers there is a unique number x and this is the conclusion so this is the theorem now very important note is here in above theorem we have assumed that the interval is closed interval is closed so if this condition is removed that means we if we are taking open interval then this theorem is not may need not be applied and this is the conclusion here in above theorem the term closed interval is important and cannot be dropped as the intersection of a decreasing sequence of open intervals may be empty and this is the example in this support suppose we are having i n as this interval 0 to 1 by n and belongs to n so as n increases so n starts from 1 so the interval initial interval is 0 1 put n is equal to 2 so 1 by 2 put n is equal to 3 so 1 by 3 so this is decreasing decreasing so that's why nested intervals i1 is superior set of i2 which is super set of i3 and so on so this is nested interval but when you taking that intersection of all these numbers so we are getting a 0 but 0 is not the part of this interval which is already ex excluded that's why phi so we will not get such type of a unique number x here so this theorem is not applied here so important is that close intervals should be closed fine so this is the theorem now one more theorem and then we will take few examples in the next video so here is the theorem very important theorem very important theorem a sequence a n is convergent a sequence is convergent if for a given epsilon greater than 0 there exists a positive integer m such that this condition holds this condition holds here we are not having l just like that in the definition in the definition of a convergent of a sequence a sequence is convergent for a given epsilon there exists a positive integer m such that a n minus l here is not l here is a m so this is the difference fine in the convergent sequence definition what the condition condition says that a n minus l is less than epsilon for all n greater than equals to m however here we are having a n minus a m 
less than epsilon for all n greater than equals to m so this is the difference this is the difference fine so a sequence is convergent if for a given epsilon there exists a positive integer m such that this condition holds so we have to prove this so how to prove this so since we don't know about the limit generally we say that we will say that an converges to some limit l then for a given epsilon there exists a positive integer such that this but here limit is not given to you so suppose limit is l so let sequence an converges to l limit l then for a given epsilon by the definition there exists a positive integer m such that an minus l is less than epsilon by 2 here we have taken epsilon by 2 rather than epsilon fine so an minus l is less than epsilon by 2 whenever n is greater than equals to m now this condition holds for all n greater than equals to m so this is also valid for n is equal to m so now put n is equal to m here specifically take specific value n is equal to m so that's why magnitude of a m minus l is less than epsilon by 2 here there is no need to take this condition because we are taking the special case of this we are taking the special case when n is equals to m so we have substituted this value that's why this is only the one term now combine these two so here we are having a n minus a m which is required so a n minus a m so add and subtract l so a n minus l minus a m minus l now apply triangle inequality this is less than equal to magnitude of a n minus l plus a m minus l this is less than epsilon by 2 here this is also less than epsilon by 2 written here so this is valid for all n greater than equals to because we are using this equation so we have to impose this so whenever n is greater than equals to m now add these two numbers so we are getting epsilon whenever n is greater than equals to m so this is the proof of this theorem but the important thing, th thing is that which is a note the converse of the above theorem is also true that means if this condition holds then we can say that we are having a convergent sequence and this criteria is known as Cauchy convergence criteria and we will discuss this in a very detailed form in next upcoming videos thank you